Hi, I'm Scott Hanselman. Hey, I'm Jeff Fritz. And this is the Intermediate ASP.NET Core 1.0 MVA. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, be sure to check out our beginner uh, virtual academy that we did. Uh, we've got a whole day of great content there to get you started at the 101 level. And I would say this is more of a 201, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. We're okay. going to need some deeper things here. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's do this. Let's start with uh, a little discussion about where we left off. And we're looking at this little basic movies application. It's okay. not really complicated. But this particular segment is going to focus on tag helpers, which we yeah. briefly touched on but didn't really dig into. Okay. So let's fire this up, and we'll take a look at our fantastically sophisticated movies database. This was actually just kind of auto-generated. We went add mm. controller, and we did a little bit of CRUD, and we ended up with some pretty basic stuff. Uh, CRUD, you mean create, read, update, and delete, right? Exactly. So okay. when you say CRUD, it's like I got some stuff, and I need to do the basics. So speaking of CRUD, if we look over here on the side, we've got delete, and then details yeah. is kind of the extra D mm -hmm. in, uh, in CRUD. How does this get generated, though, right? We know that there's a for loop in there, so let's go and just explore that for a moment. If we go and look at the movies controller briefly, we can see our get. So there's our get on index. So you hit slash movie slash index. You end up here. We grab the movies. We put them in a list, and then list of movies gets sent back over to the view, right? Yes. Okay. So then let's look at our list here. We have an I enumerable of movie. And we mentioned before that this is a forward only way of going through movies, right? It's mm -hmm. not a list. Yeah. It's uh, you can go forward, you can't go backwards. What's going on here, Jeff? Yeah, this this purple bold text, these are tag helpers. So yeah, it's an anchor tag. It's an HTML anchor tag, mm -hmm. but we've added a little extra to it to make it C sharp aware, mm -hmm. right? It's going to have some code that executes server side mm -hmm. that'll generate and add on some features to that. So in this case, we have this ASP dash action attribute that we've added on to the anchor tag. Now, we're adding a feature to it to say, you know what? Let's create an anchor tag for the create action that's defined inside my ASP controller. Couldn't I just go a href, uh, and I think it's slash movies slash create, um, and then say create new, and that's pretty much just fine. Like, why do I not just do that? You know what? That you're right. That works right now. In the future, if you move things around, if you rename some of those things, you're going to lose track of them. By using the action attribute here, we're using routing, and we're getting this ability to map and recreate that route based on how our URL scheme has been defined inside of our application. Mm -hmm. That's an important reminder that routing is two-way. Yes. Right, so the idea being that uh, if slash movies slash index you know, comes in as the URL, we figure out that it's the movies controller, but we can also say, given any function on a movies controller, what would the URL look like? Right. Does that mean I could theoretically change this to films, and I would do it in one place instead of changing it everywhere? Exactly. So now that gives us that two-way capability. We, if we change that in our configuration, everywhere that uses routing will automatically be updated for us. Okay. Why is this purple? And this is not purple in my Visual Studio editor. Right. So this is this is that visual cue that we're being given to show that, hey, there's some C sharp code. There's some server side code that's going to execute to reformat this tag a little bit for us and do some extra work. Mm -hmm. Now the HTML editor in Visual Studio, as I start typing, gives me all of these great bits of IntelliSense for oh, yeah. things that are built into HTML. Mm -hmm. and a number of them have this dot, dot, dot. So for example, for accessibility, like ARIA, I see yep. dot, dot, dot. And then it opens up a second level. Mm -hmm. I see the same thing for ASP dash. Yep. So it knows that, that not, that's not HTML, though, right? No. This, these are the tag helpers that are available to us on the anchor. These are properties that we can start to light up to add additional features to how that anchor tag is going to behave. OK. So it looks to me like then if I say ASP action, mm -hmm. see, look at that. It's purple. 
Yep. So it's a tag helper, not, not a tag helper. Right. And then we go like this and put in create. That is a, an, an action on the controller that this current view has been um, rendered by. Right. By default, it's the controller that presents that this. That presents this. Okay. Yep. So let's look at this and then do a control F5. And let's look at the source and see the difference. Okay, so we're going to bring this up. Where is our P? There we go. So here we see ASP dash action, that's a tag helper. It rendered that way. Right. Now, people who might have a little bit of historical context might hear server-side rendering, and they might think web forms, and they might think life cycles and controls and things like that. But this isn't a control. And remember how we mentioned that the movies are forward only? Yes. Tag helpers are forward only also in the sense of you're rendering the HTML. Mm -hmm. You don't get a chance to go back and render a visual tree and stuff like you did with web forms. Right. You're only acting within the scope of the beginning of that A tag to the ending of that A tag. Ah, and anything that's and hanging Anything is... in between okay. you can push a little bit into. Mm -hmm. But this tag, this tag helper couldn't be written that it could go and you know manipulate this table or do something no. at the bottom of the page. Nope. That you've already lost scope and it's already been rendered to the uh, output HTML. Mm -hmm. Now, in uh, ASP.NET MVC, in the past, I would see people do things like this. And we would say, movies, my little smart quotes kind of went all messed up there, and you know, create or whatever. And you would go and create this action link and it, it was a little weird. What's wrong with this? What's wrong with that? I mean, it worked before. It didn't quite look like this. But why is tag helper superior over this? You know, and and the HTML helpers, they're they're nice. They they're still there. And they oh well, still I'm still work. using them here. There's yeah. very good uses for them. Absolutely, but it gets us out of that HTML editing mindset. We're not writing tags anymore. We've we've flipped context. We're now writing C sharp. And if we need to reach into some of those things that are HTML centric, you now need to generate text mm -hmm. inside of your C sharp to go and place those items inside of your tags. Right. So we lose all this great functionality that's built into Visual Studio so that we can go and create C sharp strings inside of that that action link method instead. Right. Another way to think about it is that we would be writing some HTML, and we'd thinking about things in HTML. Oh yeah. And then suddenly we're in this weird gray, you know, world where we're writing some some C sharp. Yeah. And and the context switch is very disruptive. It, it is. It is very disruptive to context switch back and forth to C sharp. And it, think about if you're doing that in the middle of JavaScript. Mm -hmm. Now you're flip flopping between HTML, JavaScript, and C sharp. Mm -hmm. That's a real nightmare. Yeah. So we've simplified things. So hopefully. You're only context switching between HTML and JavaScript again. Yeah, exactly. So this additionally, we've got a string here. We got basically a magic string. Yeah. Right. So there's there's nothing here that allows uh, Visual Studio or the editor to see into that. So if I accidentally misspelled that, mm -hmm. it's still going to compile just fine. There's no problem with that, and I'm not going to know that that link doesn't work. Until no. I click on it, yeah, it'll even render correctly. Oh yeah, it'll render just fine. Mm -hmm. But yep, and that is a problem. So that is an example of one tag helper. In fact, there's a whole series of them, and they get added in with this command: add tag helper. And we saw before we can say like add model, you know, at model, and then have like movies. That usually goes at the top of the view. But if I look for add tag helper at the top of this view, I see the add model. I do not see the tag helper adding. Right. How does it know about this tag helper? So uh, previously when we were doing things in, in IIS and we had that web config that was able to drive configuration settings down into our pages, mm -hmm. into our views, we could put, stash things over there and it would just be inherited by our views. Mm -hmm. So instead now we use this view imports CSHTML page 
that you can find at the root of your views folder and everything that's listed inside that view imports CSHTML gets applied to the top of every one of our CSHTML sheets. Ah, okay. So this is interesting. It's got a bunch of using statements as well. So I could yep. probably simplify my model there and uh, because I have using, I have scope. Yep. yep. Here we're saying add all of the tag helpers that are in this assembly. Mm -hmm. And this assembly comes with ASP.NET Core. And this is something that ships with it. And we can go and dig around in here and find out how that got brought in. It got brought in yep. as part of MVC. And of course, the source is all open source. We can go up to GitHub and look at that code. But here's what you get, right? You get tag helpers for forms and inputs and links. This one's really cool, cache and I think environment. Yeah, That's a lot really of those fun. other ones look like normal HTML tags. Anchor is kind of spelled out a little bit because it's yeah. kind of weird to have Anchor a tag upper a. called A. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's a really good point. So let's think about that. Let's sort this. That's HTML. That's not HTML. Yep. So tag helpers don't necessarily have to augment an existing HTML tag. Right. You can create your own tags and provide behavior for those mm -hmm. things. And that also brings up uh, an interesting point. If we look here to, uh, this is really over, you know, overriding a tag almost and adding an attribute to the tag. Right. 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 If we're I go like that, it. if I exactly, we're enhancing the tag. See how I, now it's not a mm -hmm. tag helper, now it is. But I know for a fact that there isn't a such thing called cache. In, no. uh, you know, as a tag in HTML. I know they added a lot to HTML5, but they didn't add cache. They did not add cache. So let's do this. Let's run this again. And uh, because it's Razor, we can make a change and refresh. Mm -hmm. Make a change and refresh. So let's go in here. We'll go to slash movies. And I'm just going to put that here and I'll put that there. All right. And just to, this is kind of how I typically work. I think you're probably sure. the same. Oh, I'm very I want to make yep. sure that I'm really there. So I'll go and hit refresh. Mm -hmm. Now I've proven that that razor is in fact that. So I'm just editing the index.cshtml view. We're in the yep. movies view here. And we can go and uh, you know add something to that, all right? So the cache, as soon as we hit that, look at that. There's also distributed cache. Ooh. Yeah. So if I was going to do something in a web farm and I want to make sure I could maybe plug this into Redis, Oh, yeah. Or a more advanced cache that spans uh, multiple machines in a web farm. Sure, sure. Okay. So cache pops up. What does cache have available to me? Enabled, expires, priority, and then a very, very by it. This feels like ASP.NET of old. Yeah, this looks like the same types of cache vary by headers that we had on our page directives inside of web forms. Mm -hmm. And it's built very much with the same types of output cache management. Right. The idea being that I want this to be cached and I want it to vary by, for example, a header like uh, like the user's language. Sure. So if I'm going to go and cache someone, you know, like a date time, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the first person who shows up to my site happens to speak French, I could cache the French long date time yeah. and then deliver it to everyone else if I wasn't varying the cache. Mm -hmm by a particular switch. And then everybody gets the French look and feel, the mm -hmm. French culture, even though you might be in the United States. Exactly. So let's take a look at an example for cache. Here is, I'm going to move this over. We're going to say this cache expires in 30 seconds. Maybe I'll make it 10 seconds. Okay. Datetime dot now uh, dot uh, to local time. Okay, so this tag is that going to render? Am I going to see that in my HTML? So this is this is interesting. You're not actually going to see a tag rendered, right? Mm -hmm. But you're going to have this block that's going to end up the, being managed by the server. Mm -hmm. And the contents of what's inside that block will be rendered. Now, I could probably write some code, though, couldn't I? I could say if, and then go into the cache, uh, into cache, oh. and check for something. Right? I could write C sharp you, code that did all of this, couldn't you I? You absolutely can do that if if you need that fine grained control. 
mm -hmm. right? But if you want to stay HTML focused, if this suits your needs, and mm -hmm. it's very flexible, mm -hmm. you have all the source code available to you, so you could even extend it if you needed to, mm -hmm. and just use that cache, and it'll solve probably 90% of your caching needs. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to show you tag helpers in ASP.NET and GitHub. So we can actually go up there and we can explore the code. Remember that this is all open source, so I can go and find, look at that, I've just gone right up there to see the source code for it, and here's the there's the cache cache tag helper. Okay, now we won't get too deep into that, but you can see that it's using a memory cache, so it's yep. being held in memory, and this actually builds on top of a base tag helper base that you know does some helpful things. There's your attributes. Yep, we'll learn how to make our own in a few minutes. You see each of those HTML attributes there. When we make one uh, in a moment, we will see. But where does it render? Where does it render? Process. Uh, yeah, process. Yep, looking at the content, doing some caching. There's all of the code. This is the code I would have to write if I were to do caching correctly. And then there's your write out that. Write out the block. That center console, that center content there. So let's try that. Let's hit that and hit refresh. So right there it says it's 10 a.m. I'm hitting refresh over and over again. That's not updating. Nope. And it's it's 10:11 now. There it is. And there's so so that is expiring like we said after 10 seconds. That's a great example, but could I nest them? Could I have tag helpers within tag helpers? Yes, you can do that. Mm -hmm. It starts to get a little tricky. With, with how the tag helpers interact with each other, if you do have further more complicated ones mm -hmm. that some folks might be creating. But certainly within that cache tag helper, right. it makes sense to cache things like your anchor tag creation. Right. So here's an interesting idea. You remember in the first video, we talked about environments and the importance yes. of environments. And in the past in ASP.NET, that hasn't been built in. No. Right. The idea that there's development and there's staging and there's testing and there's whatever. Absolutely. Make uh, your own. Right. Maria and I had uh, not just production, but also fancy production, Ooh. which is better. Better production. Better production. Okay. Um, there happens to be an environment cache variable. Yes. Okay. Or cache tag, excuse me, environment tag helper, pardon me. So could I theoretically go around this and say environment names production. See how that immediately turned color there? Oh, look, and then when I pasted it, you see how that was cool? Indented, yeah, oh, yeah. I get the little free indentation there, that's nice. So now I've got show this when the environment is production, and then do this cache, and then do that work there. Now, what if I wanted to also do that caching if the environment was staging as well as production? So names, if I hover over it, because this is a tag helper, this is really important. See how I, hang, I hover over the HTML and it just says, yeah, that's an H2. It doesn't really tell me a lot. This is C Sharp behind it right there. So it's not only telling me the tag helper, but it's literally saying the uh, exact object, the exact namespace, and it says a comma separated list of environment names. Oh, cool. So staging, right? So the docs are right there as well. Too easy. It is too easy. So look at that. So we're not in production. Yep. So we don't see it. Change it to development. Hit refresh. And there it is. And we do. Pretty nice. So for folks that are thinking about things in the context of HTML, this just works. It's really, oh, yeah. really clean and it's really easy. That's one example. Here's a little bit more complicated one where we're saying not just an action, but we're passing in additional information. So we're saying ASP route ID. This is additional parameters for the route. And then we say edit. So what's going on here? Let's look at this page. We've got our list of movies, right? Now I'm going to just make this a little smaller and zoom in. And what we're going to do is I'm going to hover over these, but we're going to watch the left side. So watch over here on the left. When it shows you that URL. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. So details at four, details five, etc. Edit, delete, right? So that route information for each individual item 
that we are spinning through in this for this loop. For loop yeah. Here's our for loop right there for each item in model. We're generating more sophisticated and more complicated ones. And if we wanted to change that around, we would change it at the routing table. Yep. None of this code would change. None of it changes. It all stays the same. And right, we can change the name of the controller. We can mm -hmm. change. We can change the base level. We can change the pathing of where this thing lives, and all of our anchor tags just update automatically. All right. So why don't we do this? Let's try to write our own custom tag helper. Sounds good. All right. So let's go over to the solution explorer, and uh, I'll just stick it in the root of the application. I'm going to say add class, and I'm going to call it the repeat tag helper. We're going to make a tag helper that will just repeat stuff. It'll be like a for loop tag helper. Sure. Okay. So we've got repeat tag helper, and I'm going to derive from tag helper. And of course, it is confused about that. It doesn't know what to do. I can click on the little quick action here, and it says this is a razor tag helper. So I just added that. There you go. Just added that using statement right there. And we didn't have to add any extra references. No, that's a good point because this tag helpers are fundamental. Tag helpers are fundamental. They're to, part of Razor. They are part of Razor, and Razor is part of MVC, so everybody wins. So the base class tag helper, of course, I can right click on that and say go to definition, and we can see what is required for that base class. There's the order, there's init, but all we really need to care about is this process async. Yeah. And we talked about process versus process async a little bit in the beginner stuff, but the general idea with async is I like to think about it is like uh, do it, but do it in a way that doesn't use all the resources and wait. Like it's like yeah. if I told you to go to Chipotle mm -hmm. and I did it as a process, like go to Chipotle, I would just stare at you until it was done. Yeah. Doing it asynchronously, I like go to Chipotle, you just call me back, let me know when mm -hmm. you, you've got my tacos. Huh? I might be hanging out there for a little you, bit. I'd like to grab up, a Coke and sit. may end up not coming back. <laughs> so in repeat tag helper, I'm going to say then override. Okay. And it's going to ask me which thing I want to override. Right. And I tell you, it's this kind of IntelliSense stuff that spoils me. You know what I mean? Like it, it does. It, it, it rots I, your brain. I don't know if I could do this in Visual Studio uh, Code. <laughs> it's hard work. Uh, I used to be able to do this in Notepad, but uh, I'm afraid not anymore. So here we've got the context for the tag helper and then output. And then the base class here that says process async. So it's this chain of tag helpers, and I'm in that larger mm -hmm. rendering of Razor stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to say for uh, I love every the time, tag completion every time. stuff. There's so much good stuff. I was showing Maria prop. Yeah, that's yes, a good one. Prop, tab, tab, prop, tab. It, it, I, I've gotten so bad with four that I sometimes forget the order of the arguments. I have to, I have to write it by hand. Yeah, that's oh. going on your review. Oh. Uh, four uh, from zero to count, okay? And we're going to need to figure out what count is. Mm. We don't have count right now, okay? Because we want to make a repeat, and a repeat's going to need a count. So we'll probably need a property. So let's go prop, sure. tab, tab. Count, all right. So now we've got a count. So you're making a an integer property on this, mm -hmm. and then we're going to expose that as an attribute. Right. But attributes in HTML are strings. So this is really cool. Uh, what I like to do when I make my tag helpers is I make a comment up at the top, and I describe what the tag helper is going to look like. Okay. So I'm imagining that I'm going to say repeat count equals five, and then some HTML here in the middle. It's going to automatically, it, the tag helper base class, the tag helper subsystem is going to automatically map what's going on here. Mm -hmm. So in this case, count to uh, that to property. property. It's going to turn that string into an int automatically. So if I was going to call this like count of things, mm -hmm. that's the way you would do it in C sharp. But the way you would do it in HTML would be like that. The, they call that what? Com Kebab case? Is yeah, this is kebab. So there's, uh, that's a funny little side note, right? So there's 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 Hungarian notation, and there's there's Pascal casing, mm -hmm. and there's camel casing, yeah, and then there's uh, kebab casing. Yeah, isn't that great? So that people will watch this, they'll spend an entire day watching this thing. 
They'll get no value out of it, and then they're going to tweet us later, and they go, you know that whole thing? Not so much, but the kebab casing? Did not know that. <laughs> Fascinating bit of context there that we did not have. A little bit of history. Okay, so there's count. So then this base here, well, we can't return in the middle of that. Right? No. Because we can't return in the middle of the for loop. Right? But we do have this tag helper output. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that content, and we're just going to append the HTML. Okay? We want to go and just say append, append, append. We're going to for loop through that. But what do we want to do? Well, we're going to say repeat, right? And there's some HTML. Not just a little chunk of HTML, but it could be a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, anything that's inside this tag. Right, and it could be a deep tree sure. going all the way down. So what we're going to need to do is get that child's content. We're going to have to go and say output, uh, and we're going to say get child content. But we're doing it async because it might take a while. Sure. Okay. If there's other stuff and going if there's, on there. And if there's caching. Do we want to use caching? Do we want not want to use caching? We've got to think about that as well. I'll say no. But we're going to have to await that. Because it's async. Because it's async. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So output, await, async. Actually, I think on line 19 mm -hmm. in your signature, I think you need an async keyword ah. on that. So that's a good point. When I did the override, it popped up the little what kind of override you want to do, but it did not include the, the, async, include the keyword. async keyword. So that, o that override helper did not know. So if I hover over this, it's saying, well, it's awaitable. So we've got to do something about that. So we'll say async. Okay? And then my squigglies go away. Visual Studio is happy. OK. So this is in the namespace web application 23. Will it automatically? Be available to us? I don't I know. View, uh, I don't think view imports had. Let's find out. Let's find out. I don't know. It's this is the thing we were talking about in the introductory thing is that you know you can read the docs all you want, but ultimately you do have to experiment for yourself. Sure. So let's get rid of environment just for for cleanliness' sake. Actually, I'll just do repeat. So I'm not getting any kind of IntelliSense here. No. All right. It doesn't know what repeat is. So let's go back, like you said, to view imports. There it is. All right. So here we'll say add tag helper. And it was in web application 23. So I'm basically saying add the tag helpers from this project. Yep. OK. And then we'll close that. And we'll go back over here. And we'll see if I can get repeat to show up. So let's see if I have to open and close that that document again. I don't know. Sometime, or maybe I have to recompile. Where'd that go? That was in movies. Okay. There it is. Interesting. So in this particular case, my IntelliSense. Oh, and there it is. So it just took a moment there. You see, because it's in the it wasn't background. Done it's, compiling. It's, it's asynchronously compiling and building that stuff up. But notice, as I start typing, it even lets me know that that's available. So I'm getting IntelliSense completion on that. And look at that. Yeah, there's your count attribute. This is a that right there. Like, let's just zoom in and drink that in for a second, because this really is the the moment for me when I got tag helpers, right? Sure. I'm in HTML. I'm thinking HTML. It's convenient. I'm editing an HTML page. It's suggesting an HTML attribute. Right. And then the tooltip pops up and says, as a reminder, you know this is an int. That's a property, right? Yeah. It's nope. a really nice bit of information there. But what happens if you, if you were to put a string in there? Well, I'm going to have to put a string in there. Oh, a string like this? Yeah, if you oh. put five, right? F-I-V-E. There you go. That's a great question. I don't know. Let's find out. I bet you bad things are going to happen. Oops, let me zoom out and finish my repeat. OK, did it save? Yes. Ooh. Visual Good. Studio is upset at us. It doesn't know. It says the name 5 does not exist in the current context. It's thinking that 5 is a variable. Right. Right? So it's smart. It is, that is, you are kind of. In C, C sharp here, you're in a .NET universe at that moment. And if you change it to change it to five, it looks okay. So let's see if it actually works though. A 
look at that. Yeah, fancy, fancy. Isn't that good? So now I can go and do that anywhere things need to be repeated. If I pick it up and I move it, you know, with a larger scope. Sure. Things are going to change. So being able to write these things is super powerful, and people have made some amazing examples of these. There are some very interesting ones out there. There was one that you pointed me to uh, that was done by David Paquette, who is a, a, an open source person and an MVP, and he wrote a series of sample tag helpers, and they're all open source yep. as well. Yeah, and they're available for you to add to your project using the NuGet Package Manager. So that's interesting. Let's grab one of them. Uh, he's got tag helper samples markdown. I'm going to go back over to Visual Studio. And again, I could add this in a number of ways. Some people like to do it in their project.json. Mm -hmm. Some people like to do it at the command prompt. Other people like to right click and do it uh, within graphically. The, uh, the graphically within references. Totally up to you to how you want to do that. So we'll go here and I'll put in tag helper samples. There he is. Hit OK. Of course, that gets added to the uh, project.json. Okay. There it is, restoring the package. Yep. Oh, and this is interesting. Because it has markdown, it's also going to bring in a dependency. Another package. Mm -hmm. So this particular one is in tag helper samples.markdown. So if I remember correctly, I would go over to view imports. And we would add that, right? We're going to add all of them. Add tag helper. And what was it? Tag helper samples? Tag helper samples. Tag helper samples. Is it tag helper samples? I get them, would I get them all? Or just the markdown ones? Let's do that. Let's grab just those. Because the markdown one is the one I'm the most excited about. There's an extra quote at the end. Yeah. You can do it with quotes or without them. Okay. All right. So those tag helper samples have been added into our project. There they are. Yep. And if we look at how his tag helper samples work, he's actually built this great website where you can see them running. So we'll take some simple markdown. I'll just borrow it from his stuff. Markdown, of course, is a you know, a way to make HTML without having to write HTML. Yeah. You know how often you have like a CMS or something where you have user input and they just want to bold something. Sure. But you don't really feel comfortable putting angle brackets. No, I don't want to have to write HTML. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to use simple single keystrokes while I'm here on my keyboard. Right. So I just dropped that in and I'm actually going to use it as part of repeat. So we wrote repeat, he wrote markdown, they're both tag helpers, should just work. Make the magic happen, let's see. Mm -hmm. No pressure. None. Hit refresh. App will have to compile again. And look, at, look that. at that. Isn't that nice? That is just like a taste. Just a yeah. taste. There's so much you can do with uh, these. If you go over to Tag Helper Samples, that his site, he's got ones for Bootstrap that can help do like alerts and things like mm. this. You know, so then you would write alert. So you're almost writing your own. You're inventing your own HTML. You are. So he's also then triggering JavaScript with yeah. some of these. Yep. You can do all, all kinds of things. He's got uh, divs that match Bootstrap. It's up to you how far you want to take these kinds of things. Um, you can make them as sophisticated as you want. Um, the caching one is quite sophisticated. All the code oh, yeah. is available yep. on, uh, on GitHub. And, and I understand that a number of our uh, commercial control vendors are making tag helpers now for ASP.NET Core. Mm -hmm. So if you're used to and familiar, familiar with using a grid control from one of those vendors or a chart control, there's now tag helpers available that will do the same functionality mm -hmm. inside ASP.NET Core. Okay. So this isn't a toy. It's not just no, no. little of this, little of that. I could actually make an entire JavaScript sortable grid. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. All right. Very impressive offerings from a number of those vendors out there. All right. So that is tag helpers. That should give you a taste of what you can do and where you can get started on creating tag helpers. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back.